Our first Bible reading for today is Joshua chapter 24, reading verses 1 to 2 and verses 14 to 18. And these words will serve as the basis of this morning's sermon. We hear. Then Joshua assembled all the tribes of Israel at Shechem. He summoned the elders, leaders, judges, and officials of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. Joshua said to all the people, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Now fear the Lord, and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods your ancestors worshipped beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt, and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your ancestors that they serve beyond the Euphrates, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us to forsake the Lord to serve other gods. It was the Lord our God himself who brought us and our parents out of Egypt from that land of slavery and performed those great signs before our eyes. He protected us on our entire journey and among all the nations through which we traveled. The Lord drove before us all the nations, including the Amorites, who lived in the land. We too will serve the Lord because he is our God. This is the word of our Lord. Our psalm of the day is Psalm 100. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The portion of God's word that we're going to focus on here this morning was the first Bible reading we heard from Joshua chapter 24. May I ask you a meditation on that word? Let's pray. Lord, in this world, in this life, there are many things that are going to hurt us. Maybe even some things that are going to hurt our relationship with you. Help us to recognize the things that we need to get rid of and to cling to the things that we do absolutely need. In your name we pray. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, so being a first-time homeowner, my wife and I went through the house, and on our own personal inspection, we found out the over-the-range microwave didn't work. So tell our, our realtor and put that into the clause. Make sure that's something that gets replaced and fixed before we move in. And I did. And it only took about three years, and then that brand new microwave breaks. And I'm sitting here thinking, well, I grew up with a microwave that like never broke. It lasted for like two decades, it seemed like. And so I go and ask, where can I get another microwave like that? I want one that doesn't break. Apparently they don't exist anymore. <laughs> and apparently everything is gonna break in just a matter of time, and especially microwaves, maybe about three years, that's about what you get, and that's kind of what's happened. So my wife and I have decided, well, it costs way more to actually get someone out here to repair this microwave than just going down to Walmart and buying pretty much the cheapest one you can find and just let it break when it breaks and then you throw it away. Now throwing away broken things, that's nothing new. Archaeologists are, of course, uncovering trash heaps from thousands of years ago. It might be a little intimidating when you think about the stuff you put in your trash and what people are going to think about it 3,000 years from. But we don't just throw away broken microwaves. Sometimes we throw away relationships. When somebody who you trust, who you love, they lie about you, they turn on you, they spread rumors about you, they go and tell other people all your faults and your flaws without ever once telling you any of it, you feel very hurt. You feel as if they've taken that relationship and they have just broken it. And maybe your reaction is just first sad. Sad at the loss of that relationship, that that's broken, that's gone. How can it ever be repaired? Maybe you're mad. Mad because this person would do it after all the time and energy and effort that you've put into this relationship and now they just turn around and basically they do this thing to you? Well, that makes us say kind of in that, in that voice, well, I just don't want to be friends with you anymore. I want to just throw this relationship away because if it's going to cause me this much hurt and this much pain and I give you all everything else, I don't think it's worth it. We're hurt by these relationships. There's something about it that's broken, and we want to get rid of it. Get rid of what's broken. 
If Joshua had assembled the Israelites, he was the leader named after Moses, after Moses died. And they had successfully taken the land that God had promised to the Israelites. And now it's coming close to the end of Joshua's life. And he calls them all together to throw out some broken things. Joshua assembled all the tribes of Israel at Shechem. He summoned the elders, leaders, judges, and officials of Israel. And they presented themselves before God. Joshua said to all the people, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods your ancestors worshipped beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. That phrase, if it seems undesirable to you, a little bit more closely translated, it's a little bit more literally, if it's evil in your eyes to serve the Lord. I'm sure the Israelites were starting to think of all the times they had been hurt by God. When you go through their history, you think about the last 400 years, God is the one who let them go down to Egypt and then slowly over time become slaves in that land, lost their freedom. And God can stop that. God allowed a pharaoh to come into power who would issue such an edict, such a decree, that little baby boys were being killed of the Israelites. When Moses and Aaron showed up to say, let these Israelites go, Pharaoh then increased the workload upon the Israelites, and when they didn't meet their quota, he had them severely beaten. And then as they're wandering through the desert, they have the pain of not knowing where their next meal will come from some days, wondering where we'll get water for all these people. They had the pain of losing battles. They had been hurt by God. And being hurt by God, Joshua was standing before them, okay, if it is evil to you to serve the Lord, if you have been hurt and this relationship is broken, Right now, today, you can decide which one are you going to throw out. Are you going to throw out your relationship with God? Or are you going to throw out your relationship with all these other things, all these other gods? What will you choose? We know what Joshua chose. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. We're going to throw out all those other gods. We're going to throw them all out because they're worthless, because they don't do anything for us. And the people will right there along with Joshua say, Far be it for us to forsake the Lord and serve other gods. Well, if they had been hurt by God, why all of a sudden change this mindset? Why go back to this relationship if it also hurts them? Because they didn't just remember the hurt. They remembered what their Lord had done for them time and time again. They remembered, like we talked about last week, the very things that make an alleluia. It was the Lord our God himself who brought us and our parents up out of Egypt from that land of slavery and performed those great signs before our eyes. He protected us on our entire journey and among all the nations through which we traveled. And the Lord drove out before us all the nations, including the Amorites, who lived in the land. We, too, will serve the Lord because he is our God. They had seen a God who not just caused things that caused them hurt. They had seen a God who rescued them. They had seen a God that even when they became angry and violent and cursed him, God did not just take them and throw them away. Instead, God continued to provide for them. God continued to be with them. God continued to watch over them, to protect them through the battle. Everything they had, they knew it had come from God. God did not throw them away. So how could they throw him away? You know, in this life, we have relationships that hurt. One of them is going to be with our God. 
It's going to hurt not because God is some kind of sadist and he enjoys watching us hurt. It's not because God is vindictive and he wants to find ways to make you hurt because you hurt him. No, the only time God allows hurt in our life is when he allows it to then be shaped and formed for something better. But that doesn't make it less painful. There are times, just like happened to the Apostle Paul, where something painful came into his life. He called it a thorn, a, a, a messenger of Satan that was tormenting him. And as he was pleading with God, take this pain away from me. Why are you allowing this? God says, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. I know this hurts. But it hurts because you're trying to trust in yourself and you won't get through this. I've left this hurt in your life so that you would look to me. That in me you would find strength. In me you would find a God who's not just going to say this is broken, I'm just done with it, I'm going to throw it away. But a God who will tirelessly and continuously work to save you and fix you. That sometimes the things that God allows into our lives, when, when these hardships come in and these relationships and these people and they hurt us and we know they shouldn't because we know they love us, why does God allow this? Sometimes it's just to get us to realize this is not our home. This is not the place where we are going to experience the joys that God has in store for us. This world is broken. It's broken by our sin. And our God came down, instead of just saying, you know what, it's done, I'm just going to throw it away. No, he said, I'm going to fix this. I'm going to come. And I'm going to provide my life in place of yours. I'm going to live the perfection that I require of you. And I'm going to sacrifice my life. I will shed my blood to free you from the captivity of the slavery to sin, to free you from this broken world, to know that this is not the end all and be all of your existence. I have something so much better for you. A perfect relationship. One that won't get broken. One that when this life is over, you will enter into a place where never will you be hurt by relationship again. We have a God who does not throw us away even though we get broken. Even though we have people in our lives who do hurt us, and it's not right, our God still continues to be with us, to watch over us, to protect us, to give us exactly what we need. To use these events in life, these hurts and these pains, to instead fix our eyes on Jesus, to see the one who is the author and perfecter of our faith. When we start to remember all the things that our God does, when we start to remember He will never throw us away, but instead every day He's going to be working on us to fix us and to take care of us, the pain isn't as bad. And we know our God has something so much better in store for us. So instead, let's throw away the things that take away from our God. The relationships that try to prevent us to be with God. The relationships that say, you don't need God. The relationships that say, God doesn't love you. Those are the broken relationships. Those are the ones that we're called to just get rid of. Instead, we cling to our God. Invest in that relationship. In the one who has lived for us, who spends his time to fix us broken people. He does this through our baptism. That day where he has taken our sinful nature and he has drowned it, and he has said, okay, that's done, it's over, I'm raising you up a new per person, perfect and complete. God has made us new people. He has fixed what is broken, because he wouldn't throw us away. And so knowing that, we have that opportunity every day that we get up to say the same thing along with Joshua and the people. When it comes to our life, yes, our God might allow things into our lives to hurt us. 
but he's always there to fix us and to make sure one day we will never be broken again. So we throw out the things that take us away from God. Instead, we follow what Joshua and the people said. He said, as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Amen.